Shalom to the brothers, shalom to the sisters, shalom to y'all online, if you're watching, um, or Periscope. Um, today's topic, how to spot the devil. Um, this class is inspired off of what I watched on YouTube. Um, uh, um, I watched the elder do an interview on a radio show with a Christian, well, brother involved in Christianity, and a Muslim. And he was basically, you know, going into the truth, whatever, explaining explain explain the Bible, whatever. And the Muslim said to him, don't use the Bible. Let me hear what you have to say. I said, okay. Okay, here we go. Then another video I watched recently with uh, brothers, Captain Gazakabar out there in North Carolina at the barbershop. So I'm watching the video. I was getting upset watching it. I just skimmed through it after a while. I started getting too coonish. And as I'm watching it, as the brothers bring the scriptures out, the guy got emotional because Captain Gazaka said that his Bible is, you know, it's the New International Version is no good. He got emotional, kept bringing it up every, every 20 minutes. My Bible's no good, so I have anything to say. It's effeminate as hell. So then after a while, towards the end, the Edomites are there sitting there all mad. They left first. Then after a while, another brother says, okay, enough. No Bible. Enough. Close shop. He says that. I said, oh, again, with the, no, oh, and the guy goes, who is Jesus Christ to you? No, 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 I don't want to hear the Bible. I want you to tell me who is Jesus Christ to you. <laughs> and I'm like, well, how are you supposed to explain who Jesus Christ is without the Bible? You wouldn't know who he was if it weren't for the Bible. So that's how you know, when you, that's how you're able to recognize when the devil is in the room. When you hear them say things to you like, I don't want to hear the Bible. I want to hear what you have to say. Because the Bible, as the scriptures is coming out, they all saw what he was bringing out was right. But the devil was like, I don't want, even though he's saying was right, I don't want to hear it. I want to hear your emotions. And then once, once you give them your emotions, it becomes an emotional conversation. The Bible's put to the side. Everybody can amend and they sin. That's what it all boils down to. So let's start with um, John 8 and 43. The book of John, chapter 8, verse 43. Why do ye not understand my speech, even because ye cannot hear my word? So Christ is speaking to his own brothers, the leaders, Pharisees, and he said, why can you not understand what I'm saying? It is because you cannot hear my word. You can't hear it because their, their ears have been dulled, their eyes have been darkened. They don't see that. There's too much sin inside of them. They don't want to hear the word of God. That's what he was saying to them. Go to Jeremiah 5 and 14. This is why you'll hear people say, I don't want to hear the Bible. I want to hear your words instead. This is why. Jeremiah 5 and verse 14. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 5, verse 14. Wherefore, thus saith the Lord God of hosts, because ye speak this word, behold, I will make my words in thy mouth. No, he says because I, because I, you speak this word, meaning the Bible. Go ahead. Behold, I will make my words in thy mouth fire, and this people would. So when you speak, you're going to offend people. Because some of us try to maneuver ourselves in a way where the Bible comes out. We try to be, you know, I see Israelites oftentimes argue with these, um, with the comedic church. That's what it is. The unconscious comedic church. They'll try to meet them halfway. There is no halfway with the Bible. It's the Lord's way or no way or death. There's no meeting common ground or... Meet me halfway or, or great. No, there's no gray area. It's either do or don't. Live or die. That's how the Lord deals. Our forefathers didn't sit down with unconscious ne Negroes and just have a, oh, let's talk about Chakra and Naruto and Dragon Ball. I'm not discussing that with you. You know the Bible. The five chakra points. What does that have to do with salvation? But you hear Jake, yeah, you're going to the Bible. The Lord's, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to even do it. The point is that you have Jake trying to meet them halfway with that stuff. And the Bible does not talk, go into that nonsense. But it's that trimming your way to seek love. That's, that's what's happening. You trim your ways. You don't trim your way to seek love. You hear the word of God or you don't. Okay? Read again. Wherefore, thus saith the Lord God of hosts, because ye speak this word, behold, I will make my words in thy mouth fire. And this people would. What does, does fire work together with wood in terms of, does it, they work separately? No, the fire burns the wood. 
it burns it. It takes it gets gets rid of it after a while. The word is no more. You understand? So when you bring the word of God out, it burns. It hurts people. It ain't there to comfort you, and it's not there for that. It comforts you when you realize you're Israel and you apply the commandments of God, and the comfort comes in. But when you're in that sin, it hurts. That fire burns when you're in that sin, in that wickedness, that rebellion. Go ahead. And it shall devour them. You're going to piss people off. You're going to piss people off. As I said for years, I'll say it again. This truth is 80% confrontation and 20% everything else. That's what it is. When the Bible comes out, people get mad. Y'all see it at camp? You see it with your family members? You see it people you people may see your fringes and give you... I get mean looks all the time. What I do to them? But they see the fringes. Oh, that's right, nigga, Israel. I ain't doing nothing to you. But they see, okay, fringes, Israelite. They get mad. They get defensive. This, just from that alone. Because that shows that they know, okay, he's doing that Bible stuff. That's what happens. The word, the most high's word is fire. And the people become what? They get burnt. Brother said that uh, he have peace in his home until he opened up the Bible. Yeah. Yep. You remember we heard that. I remember that. One of leadership. One of leadership. <laughs> Everything is fine, but when I open that Bible, we got problems. Well, damn it, the house got to just burn up. Acts five twenty eight. I'm gonna give you an example of it burning. I'll give you an example of the burn. The book of Acts chapter five verse twenty eight. Being out of speed, these are the Pharisees threatening the disciples not to teach the doctrine of Christ anymore. That's what's happening right now, and they did anyway. Go ahead, saying, did not. We straightly command you that ye should not teach in this name. Watch this. And behold, ye have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine. That's the name. Same thing. Explains what the name is in that verse. But go ahead. Ye have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine and intend to bring this man's blood upon us. Because they were explaining to him, they, was, they, they were explaining to the Pharisees how you guys killed Christ. You knew he was a Messiah. You went and killed him anyway. He was a just man, he was innocent, and y'all had him put to death. So you, you trying to make us look bad. So you trying to make us look bad by teaching this man's doctrine and bring his blood upon us. Condemn us. Go ahead. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, we ought to obey God rather than men. So our job is to obey God rather than men. Hear God's words rather than man's words. But you in the world, brothers want to be emotional. All of a sudden, and you notice also, Everyone becomes a scholar. When you're on the street teaching, somebody want to come up and say something? Yeah, you know, I want to say something. You have a question, brother? No, no, it's a statement. Yeah, you know, back in 85, you know. Uh, I don't want to hear that. I don't want to hear none of that stuff. Because you had all that time to do that when we wasn't here. But now that we are here, now you're a scholar. Now you want to teach your people. There's four corners. You can use that corner. No, you want to stand in front of us and use our platform to boost yourself. That's called emulation in Galatians 5. That's the fruit of Satan. Fruit of the flesh. That's what that is. That's that Negro rivalry. I can do what you can do, and I can do it better than you without that Bible. Because that's the devil in them. Go ahead, read again. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey God rather than men. Basically, we ain't listening to you. We listen to what the Bible says. That's what they said to them. Go ahead. The God of our fathers raised up Jesus. Whom you slew and hanged on a tree. When you slew and had hung on a, on a cross, made of wood, comes, which comes from a tree. Go ahead. Him have God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior, for to give repentance to Israel. So Christ is our prince and he's our savior. And he was the one he granted only the nation of Israel a chance at repentance. Repentance is open to nobody else on this earth at all. Go ahead. And forgiveness of sins and he granted us forgiveness of sins through his son's death that's only granted to the israelites anybody else no i ain't for you go ahead and we are his witnesses of these things and so is also the holy ghost and so is also the holy ghost now wait well, wait a minute so so is also the speaking in tongues how much that he's talking about so is also the holy ghost so the holy ghost is also a witness of these things so it's the holy ghost it's the word of god and that, that verse alone destroys that speaking in tongues crap. Because the word of God is not a bunch of jibber-jabber. You understand to read when you see it. It's not a bunch of humble, humble, humble stuff. It's clear here. Read again. And we are his witness of these things. And we are his witnesses of these things. And so is also the Holy Ghost, whom God hath given to them that obey him. Go ahead. 
When they heard that, so when they heard them speak these words, go ahead. They were cut to the heart. They got burnt. They didn't like that. They were cut to the heart. Go ahead. And took counsel to slay them. We're going to kill these dudes. I don't like what I heard. I'm going to kill you. See that? So it's the word of God comes out. When you speak out this Bible, it offends people. You must prepare for the offending of people. People are going to be mad. That's why they don't want to hear that Bible. Because the Bible, when you open the book, give you an example. You have the 40, they call it, 49 confessions. What is that thing? The 44 confessions? 42 negative confessions, right? Yeah. I don't listen to that either. That's how I lost the number. I don't know the number. When you deal with that stuff, right? There's no laws. Like, for example, what happens to a, a um, what is the judgment against messing around with a woman not taking care of your kids? Where is that in the negative confessions? It's not in there. Lesbianism, where is that? It's not in there. Keep the Sabbath day holy, where is that? It's not in there. The Negro is a negative confession. Yeah, right. The Negro is a negative confession. <laughs> There's more than 42 of them, too. There's millions of them. But the point is, is that brothers will subscribe to anything else that's not in the Bible. Because when they open the Bible, they're reading, that's not with adultery. Damn. That's not steal. Damn. Be sober. I can't get weed. I can't get drunk. Damn. The Bible is a convicted book. It could be a book of conviction. Because you're reading it, you're seeing all the things you're doing wrong. And it's saying not to do it. Say so like, damn, I'm doing that. What's wrong with that? I can't do that either. Damn. I can't eat pork no more. I can't eat shrimp. That bothers them. So what do they do? They run to things that allow them to continue doing what they want to do. That's why they always say to you, no, I want to hear the Bible. I want to hear your words. That's what they do. It's the same thing with Egyptology. Everyone has their own philosophy. That's why I say as a church, all these unconscious community leaders have their own sermon. They have their own sermon. They all come with their own doctrine. One's talking about chakra. One's talking about Kamehamehas. One's talking about transformers. One's talking about Satepticons. There's always something deep. Everyone has their sermon, but no one learns anything. Everyone stays the same. Everyone's still a hoe. Everyone's still a whoremonger. Everyone's still doing drugs. Sneaking drugs in their behind hole, calling themselves natural. I'm not going to say a name. Don't, don't say a name, Cap. You might repent. That's what they're doing. But they get to stay and do what they want to do. So their drugs, do their drugs, whatever. No, one, no change. The Bible gives laws, instructions, and discipline. Jake don't want to hear that. Continue. Go to um, 751. And yes, that was not a joke. I'm dead serious. They're sneaking drugs inside their anus. That's what they're doing. They've done that. The book of Acts, chapter 7, verse 51. Ye stiff-necked and uncircumcised in heart and ears, ye do always resist the Holy Ghost. So he's just a step in speaking to the same type of people, the same elders, Pharisees, and scribes, saying, you do always resist the Holy Ghost. Go ahead. As your fathers did. As your forefathers did. So do ye. You still doing it now. Now, people, when they say to you, I want to hear that Bible, I want to hear you, that's them resisting the Holy Ghost as well. It's the same thing. Go ahead. Which... Of the prophets have not your fathers persecuted, yeah. and they have slain them which show before of the coming of the just one. Because yeah, the prophets of old prophesied the Messiah, and our forefathers even then didn't want to hear that, and they had them put to death. Go ahead. Of whom ye have been now, the betrayers and murderers. So Stephen is repeating what the disciples told the Pharisees in chapter 5. He's repeating everything. Go ahead. Who have received the law by the disposition of angels? And have not kept it. Who have received the law by disposition of angels and have not kept it. Or they resisted what? The Holy Ghost. So the law of God is the Holy Ghost in 51. 53 explains 51. They resisted the Holy Ghost. They rejected the law. It's the same exact thing. That bear witness to Christ being put in that cross, being put to death. That's in the law that Israel was resisting from the time of old until now. Even until this day. Go ahead. When they heard these things. When they heard these things. If you read chapter 7 from the beginning, he's quoting and paraphrasing all the Old Testament scriptures, all the history up in the rebellion until now, until that time. Go ahead. When they heard these things, they were cut to the heart. There you go again. Cut to the heart and pissed them off. Go ahead. And they gnashed on him with their teeth. And they started speaking evil of him. Go ahead. But he, 
being filled of the Holy Ghost, looked up steadfastly into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing on the right hand of God and said, Behold, I see the heavens open and the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God. The Lord let him see us because he was going to die. So the Lord allowed him to see him, him and his son at once. Go ahead. Then they cried out with a loud voice and stopped their ears. What did they do? Then they cried out with a loud voice. Ah, I want to hear that. They covered their ears. Go ahead. And stopped their ears. They covered their ears. Go ahead. And ran upon him with one accord. And then when you read it, I'll skip them. Stop there. They killed him there. All right. Um, and Saul was there. We, we don't. We don't. Let's just get it. And cast him out of the city and stoned him. And they killed him. Go ahead. And the witnesses laid down their clothes at a young man's feet, whose name was Saul. And this is Saul. So Saul at this time was he was he was down with it. He was a Pharisee at the time. That's why I still don't mention his name because mention names because brothers may repent. Saul sat right there. He was he, he was he was agreement to it. He held their clothes, held their clothes while they stoned Stephen. At this time when he was not Paul yet, he was still he was a converter yet. All right. So that's what you know. People have a chance to get their minds right. Some I mention no names, but these things have gone on in that community. And they continue to go on. They always have a sermon with no change, no law, no order, no discipline, no structure, nothing. Just everyone had their own opinion. Everyone has their own platform, their own belief, whatever, and it's all confusion. It's madness. No, and they, and what they do, get high-powered rifles and shoot the, shoot the Bible full of holes. Literally, physically. Got a rifle and shot the Bible full of holes because they hate the Bible that much. All right? And record it like it's funny, like it's a joke. Taking the most out for a joke. Go ahead. Hebrews 4 and 12. Explain why they were cut to the heart. Why does he use that term, cut to the heart? Hebrews 4 and 12. I know this. This is why they say to you, I'm going to revolve the class around that point. I don't want to hear your words. I mean, God's word. I want to hear your words. This is why. 4 and 12. The, the book of Hebrews, chapter 4, verse 12. For the word of God is quick. The word of God is quick, meaning sometimes you'll bring something out. And it'll affect someone quickly. They'll, be, they'll get it. You may think they don't got it, but they got it. That's what they'll say to you afterwards. I don't want to hear that. Let me hear your words. Because that, that word, when you hear that, don't be, don't, that's not coming to adultery. They're like, mm, they get mad. They feel it. Okay, that conviction comes to them real fast. Go ahead. For the word of God is quick and powerful. And what? Powerful. It's quick and powerful. Okay, quick and powerful. Go ahead. It affects you immediately. Go ahead. And sharper. Than any two-edged sword. So what is a, a sword's job? Its job is to cut you. And the word of God is quick and sharp. Like a two-edged sword, that's why the people will cut to the heart when the word of God comes out. They don't want to hear that. That's why they ran upon them and stopped their ears. Because they were getting cut all over the place. They didn't like that. Who likes to get cut? Physically. So let alone spiritually, that's even worse. Go ahead. Piercing even to the dividing Asunder of soul and spirit cuts deep, deeper than the flesh. It cuts your spirit, your conscience, your mind. It cuts all of that. Go ahead. And of the joints and marrow it cuts deep into the cuts even deeper into the into the joints and marrow. Go ahead. And is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. What does that mean? Read it part again. And is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Give you an example. The elder will teach a class. He'll talk about one. He'll talk about a situation. He'll bring it out. Sometimes it'll be random. He's like, "I'm sorry, I, I went off the topic." He'll say that. It's never off the topic. It's always object, It's always referring to somebody in this room. Always or online. It always refers to you. That's why it's, 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 it's a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Because the most hour or well, a lot of spirit to bring something out in the class, and it may not be for you. Maybe for the one next to you, or the one behind you. Or the one in front of you. Hell, sometimes even up here, I'd be like, damn. Got me, I'm mean, getting cut myself. Oh, damn. That's messed up, Elder. You ain't right. But you feel it. That's why it's quick and powerful because it comes and moves. It's quick. But sometimes people get offended. You talk about me. It may not be about you. But if you're mad, it is about you. You shouldn't be mad. So if you're mad, it's about you. If I get mad, I know it's about me. I'm like, sitting at the desk, whatever. But whatever, we eat the point. But you get cut indirectly or directly. That's why it says two-edged sword. You swing it one direction, you miss that way. You swing the other direction, it cuts either way. It's, both, it's sharp on both ends. 
It cuts both ways. Sometimes you bring something out, you don't even cut your damn self. You'd be like, wow, damn. I shouldn't have read that at all. Damn. <laughs> you know, it happens. It's two edged sword. Two edged sword. It sharpens you and sharpens the person you're teaching. That's what I love to teach. Brothers, as you progress, you teach. As you're teaching others, you're teaching yourself at the same time. It's just two edged sword, but it works both ways, both sides. All right? Get um, Zechariah 7 and 11. The book of Zechariah, chapter 7, verse 11. But they refused to hearken and pulled away the shoulder. It means you go like this to someone, he pull the shoulder, don't touch me. Pull away the shoulder, don't touch me. Go ahead. And stopped their ears. What they do? And stopped their ears. That's the Pharisees and scribes did when they went to kill Stephen. They stopped their ears and ran on him with one accord. See, Negroes are in accord when they come to evil. They ran on him with one accord. And killed him together in unity. Evil as hell. But this says they stopped their ears. Go ahead. That they should not hear. They don't want to hear the Bible. I don't want to hear the Bible. Let's hear your words. The same thing again, again, and again throughout the scriptures. No spirit on this earth is new. It's the same recycled demon you deal with over and over again. It's never nothing new. And it is a demon. It is a demon. How many of y'all... When y'all go to work, y'all have a, a lunch period where you'll have like a lunch room or a lounge or something like that. How many of you raise your hand? Now, the holidays are coming up, right? Thanksgiving, Christmas. So-called Christmas is coming along. Go in your lounge or in your locker room and read Jeremiah the 10th chapter and see what happens. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Just try that. Yeah. <laughs> Test the waters. <laughs> You'll be in the office answering questions. Yeah. <laughs> Y'all know what I'm talking about. Just read it. Just sit, but you know, I'm just going to read. Learn not the ways of the nation. Learn not the, for one cut of the tree out of the forest. What the hell is nigga talking about? Mm -hmm. Y'all understand? Y'all know you got problems, right? Try that thing. And the same dude, I don't but know don't the law. But don't call me when the thing, you know. <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> and the same guy, I don't know the law. He'll go, yeah, listen to, you're going to guidebook. Right. Don't have to discuss religion. Right. You're going to that law book then. Nico don't, Nico don't know his job description. Right. Don't know that law. Right. Not to discuss religion and so and so in the job place. See, you went there because they didn't catch it. When I say you be in the office answering questions, yeah. that's exactly what I meant. Because they'll go right to that and say he's down there teaching religion. Yep. You talk about boom about whoredom, selling drugs, hiding drugs. You good? But that Jeremiah ten, oh, not supposed to in the job place. Not supposed to do that. But he, the guy was talking about selling crack earlier. Yeah, it's different. That's something. That's something separate. That's something separate. That ain't, that, ain't, that ain't religion. But that's how Jake is. Verse 12. Verse 12. Zechariah 7, verse 12. Yea, they made their hearts as an adamant stone. You're hard-headed. Lest they should hear the law. Notice it says they made their hearts that way. Meaning they deliberately don't want to hear nothing the Bible has to say. Willfully say, I don't want to hear that Bible. Uh, Deacon, what I was saying to that is exactly... In that same lounge or, the lo or that locker room, read a Quran has no effect. Yep. Read a book, a, book of, a book of the dead, the Hindu, whatever. Yep. No problem. Read that Bible. Yep. Cut. Knives all over the place. Bleed. Iron swords. Right. <laughs> read again. Yeah, they made they made their hearts as an adamant stone, mm -hmm. lest they should hear the law. Hear that? Lest they should hear the law. They don't want to hear that law. Go ahead. And the words which the Lord of hosts has sent in his spirit by the former prophets. Go ahead. Therefore came a great wrath from the Lord of hosts. Therefore came death and enslavement from the Lord of hosts. For Negroes that I want to hear the Bible. You see, look at verse 12. Start verse 12 off again. Yea, they made their hearts as an adamant stone. They hardened themselves against the Bible. As soon as they heard the Bible come out, they got mad. They hardened their mind and it. Y'all know what I'm talking about, right? That's what it means. They harden their heart behind that thing. Another way to harden your heart is make excuses. Right. That's the excuses. Well, I do it for the kids. Right. Well, I do it for, for my mama. I do it for my wife. I do it for my husband. No, no, you don't. You do it for you. Because you're greedy and covetous. I said that I can't. 
Every almost all the main holidays that bring in the most money are the holidays that bring forth rewards. Halloween, candy, Christmas Day, gifts, Thanksgiving, dinner, birthday, cake. Those are the biggest, those are the main ones. Well, not uh, those are holiday, but mainly Thanksgiving, Halloween, and Christmas are the main holidays that make bring in the most dough. Super, I, I want to get some donuts the other night. I go in the store, not a single donut. I said, damn it, because they bought up the whole store. All I want was some donuts, man. I was mad as hell. But there was, em- the store was empty. Entenmann's, man. Entenmann's donuts. I think this is good. But it was, go- it was gone. Gone. I'll be in coverage. I shouldn't have done donuts. But I want donuts. But the whole thing, the store was locked down. It was no- nothing there. The juice is gone. The snacks are gone. All for that one day. And the streets was empty. Streets, no, no traffic, nothing. Thanksgiving, oh. Thursday. Yeah, it was Thursday, right? Yeah. Yeah, Thursday. The streets empty. Uh, I, was, I, I, I had to I think about it. For I a forgot. Moment. I forgot. <laughs> you don't keep that stuff, so you don't, you don't keep track of that stuff. So I'm walking, like, why are these stores empty? What's going on? I'm going to store to store. There's no donuts here either. What's happening? Because <laughs> it was Thanksgiving. It was Thanksgiving. They <laughs> <laughs> left all the, all the nasty, the brown ones. What was everything called? Glazed. I was like, yeah. I don't want that. It's gone because yeah. everyone's mind is in that Thanksgiving. All right? <laughs> Go to, um, Verse 13. Therefore, it has come to pass that as he cried, and they would not hear. So they cried, and I would not hear. Right, that's the murder. That's the raping. That's the lynchings. That's the castrations, the disembowelments, separation from your family, the slave auctions. That's all that. You cry, he's like, nope. Because when you had your wife, you had your kids, had your sons, you had your land, you disrespected me. Now I'm disrespecting you. The Lord don't play. We take him as a Barney in the sky. Love everybody, love the kids, dance around. That's not how he is. He don't like disrespect. So when you self say to someone, I don't want to hear, and they say to you, I don't want to hear God's words, I want to hear your words, that's disrespectful. He don't like that. Whether you believe it or not, he don't like that. And that's how judgment comes on you. Fit quicker than usual. All right? Go to, um, you finish that? Saith the Lord of hosts. Because I said so. Go to, read on, read verse 14. Verse, for, verse 14, but I scattered them with a whirlwind among all the nations See? whom they knew not. Go ahead. Thus the land was desolate after them. So our land is no longer inhabited by all the nations of Israel. Go ahead. That no man passed through nor returned, for they laid the pleasant land desolate. We ain't there. We still ain't there as a nation. We ain't there. Get John eight forty four. I know this one, John 8, 44. This is when Christ started cursing them out. We read 43 earlier. You cannot hear my word. Read verse 44 now. Verse 44. Ye, John 8, 44. Read verse 43. Verse 43. Why do ye not understand my speech, mm-hmm. even because ye cannot hear my word? Why can't they hear your word? Next verse. Ye are of your father the devil. You know he said? You are of your father the devil. You Negroes are devils. Go ahead. And the lust of your father you will do. You're going to do whatever the hell it is you want to do. Go ahead. He was a murderer from the beginning. He had hate for his brother from the beginning, as y'all do for me. Go ahead. And abode not in the truth. Did not abide in God's laws, as God's laws were around back then. Go ahead. Because there is no truth in them. Go ahead, because he didn't want to apply the, apply the truth. Go ahead. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own. Go ahead. For he is a liar and the father of it. See that? So ye of your father the devil. That is the reason why you can't hear God's words. That's why. Go to um, verse 47. Verse 47. He that is of God heareth God's words. Read it again. He that is of God heareth God's God's words. So when you don't want to hear God's words, who, who's your father? Devil. The devil. It's clear. Read it again. He that is of God heareth God's words. So when you're up, so because Captain, Captain Zuckerberg said, listen, we came here to bring the Bible to y'all, and y'all said, you don't want to hear that. And one guy was like, yeah, you're right. You did say that. They did say that. You don't hear the word of God. Because some guys just watch the catcher like, wait, we hear what the Bible, what the, the Bible says. We the, the true authority is the word of God, so why are we avoiding that? Even the, in the video, the interview with the pastor, with the Muslim and the Christian, the, Christ, the guy in Christianity said, yo, man, listen, how are you going to have a discussion on a religious talk show and not let us use the Bible? 
That made no damn sense. This is a Christian, a modern Christian pastor. Even he was like, yo, what the hell is going on? Even he was confusing. He's the devil too. Got the, the devil got the devil confused. What the hell is going on here? But that just shows you how deep and evil our people are to come to that Bible. They read the Quran. The Quran's repeating what the Bible says. Don't want to read the Bible? I mean, no damn sense. Because ye have your father the devil. And the lust of your father you're going to do. 47 again. He that is of God heareth God's words. Ye therefore hear them not because ye are not of God. That's why. Because you're not of God. Next verse. Then answered the Jews and said unto him, Say we not well that thou art a Samaritan and hast a devil? You know how Jake do. He do respond. Oh, you the devil. It's not name calling you. You get cut. It's not name calling. You the devil, nigga. Yeah, yeah. Now you mad. Now they mad now. It's all calling them names. You're a Samaritan. You're a devil. But he was right. They were getting cut by that. Go to Isaiah 30, verse 8. Isaiah 30 and 8. Isaiah chapter 30, verse 8. Now go, write it before them in a table, and note it in a book, go ahead. that it may be for the time to come forever and ever. From then till now. Go ahead. That this is a rebellious people. We are rebellious people. Lying children. Lying children. Lie and love to hear lies. Children that will not hear the law of the Lord. That will not hear it. That will turn over the shoulder, stop their ears, same thing. Make their heart as an adamant stone, same exact thing being said. Go ahead. Would say to the seers. Watch this. Would say to the prophets, which are called seers of old, in the old time. Go ahead. See not. You don't want to hear. Listen, close that Bible. Let me hear what you say. Let me hear what you, let me hear what you think. No, I'm, I'm not doing that. But that's what they said to the prophets even back then. See not. Go ahead. And to the prophets, prophesy not unto us right things. You don't want listen, them laws they're done away with. We're under grace now. It's just about it's about faith and just confessing you um, lo, confessing him as your Lord and Savior. It's the same thing. Go ahead. Speak unto us smooth things. I'm gonna die. What? I'm gonna get put to death. What do you mean? Brother, that's evil. You got evil in your heart. You got to have love. It's all about love, brother. Love. Then you go on to first John 5 and 3. Yeah, love. They just ignore it. Love. It's madness. It's the devil in them. That's the devil you're dealing with. Go ahead. Prophesy deceit. Prophesy to us things that sound good. Prophesy deceit. Yeah, you got yeah. Can you read, verse, read the top part of 10 again? Would say to the seers, see not. Stop. Who in here goes to camp? I know it's uh, everybody, right? Hands up, hands up. When it says... Which say to the seers, see not what is happening. What is happening? What are they talking about? Microphones. I want to see who's going to get it. I ain't going to say nothing else. I want to see if y'all going to get it. Shalom. Shalom. Uh, seers, seer is another word for prophet. We got that part. So the part that I want to see not. They say see not, meaning don't see my sins. Thank don't, you. Don't that is exactly what it's saying. Because you remember the bishop used to get on us. Here we be teaching, and here comes a crackhead right in front of us. The uh, uh, woman with tight pants on, or, or what's a, the sin to be obvious? Yeah. Somebody's oh, selling the dope, the right? The elephant's in the room, that kind of thing. The elephant is in the room, staring you in the face. You want to talk about Deuteronomy 20 and the slave ships, and you got the doggone demon right in front of you. You don't want to say nothing. That's another way of saying, look, don't see what you really see. The elephant is in the room loud, hitting you in the face with the trunk. You stand there talking about some gimme dude around me, 2868. That's what that's talking about. Read it again. Would say to the seer, see not. Don't see my sin. Just like what the brother said, exactly. Don't see my sin. Don't say nothing about my sin. Because if you do, you're going to get a blot. We're going to fight. Yep. And some brothers get scared. And don't say nothing. Be talking about something else that's totally irrelevant to what's right in front of them. Yep. Get your behind down. You can't teach. Whole post. <laughs> Go ahead. You know what C not translates to? Judge not lest ye be judged. That's right. that's Only God can judge right. me. That's what, that's what C not is. Only God can judge me. Negro, that's Tupac. That's not in the Bible. That's the book of Tupac chapter one. That's not in the Bible. That's Tupac's book. That's not in the Bible. Stop that. that goes Thug life. Down. Stop. No. No, that's, that's not in the Bible. Judge right. not lest ye be judged. That's in the scriptures, but they go, Only God can judge me. Right. It's not in the Bible. If God, like I said on a camp all the time, 
if God has to stop what he's doing on his busy schedule to judge you, you're a dead man. You finished. You done. He got to stop. Hey, Michael, Gabriel, hey, stop. I got to judge this guy right here. If he got to do that, you're done. You're going to die a death that no man ever seen before. This is going to be like a, you're going to get blow up, come back together again, blow up again. It's going to be something crazy. It's going to be something crazy. Go ahead. You want to say something? Uh, oh, okay. Give him a microphone. Well, while he's getting the microphone, this is going back to what you were saying in the beginning. Confrontational. That's what this is about. That's what verse, what the verse that we read. Verse 10. That's confrontation right there. See not. Yes, we are going to confront you with what you're doing. Go ahead. Shalom, leadership. Yeah, people, um, since you brought that up, only God could judge me. They always tell me that you can't judge. They always bring that up on uh, Matthew 7 and 1 with right, that. Uh, right. That, oh, you can't judge me. Only. Right. That's the you, Matthew 7 and 1, exactly. That's the use. But the only God can judge me part ain't in the Bible. Judge not that she be judged, that's scriptural. But only God can judge me, it's, that's Pac. That's Pac in them. That's not, that's stuck life in them. That's not in the scriptures. All right, go on, give me um, Matthew, oh, what was that? Read uh, on, verse 10 again. Isaiah 30, verse 10, you was Would say to the seers, see not, and to the prophets, prophesy not unto us right things, right. speak unto us smoke things. Go ahead. Prophesied deceits. Get you out of the way. Turn aside out of the path. Get out of that Bible, man. Why do you read that Bible all the time? You some, that's other books you can read. Other books. Get out of that Bible stuff. Go ahead. Cause the Holy One of Israel to cease from before yeah, us. That, close, the, close the Bible. Let me hear what you have to say. It's the same thing. Same spirit. Read on. Wherefore thus saith the Holy One of Israel. Now he's going to explain why they say this. Go ahead. Because ye despise this word. Here we go again. They despise the law. They hate the law. Go ahead. And trust in oppression. And, and trust in America. Trust in society with philosophies or ways. Go ahead. And perverseness. And want to stay in your sin, your whoredom, your, your, your drug dealing, whatever the case may be. Go ahead. And stay thereon. And want to stay like that. Don't want to change. Want to stay thereon. Go ahead. Therefore, this iniquity shall be unto, shall be to you as a breach of Ready to fall. Like a sudden destruction will fall upon you. Go ahead. Swelling out in a high wall, whose breaking cometh suddenly at an instant. The breaking can be either a bullet, a knife, disease, whatever he sees fit. The Lord's the king of terrors. Whatever he thinks to do to you that can hurt the most, he will do it. I've seen, I've seen or heard about people who gotten hit by trains. Their bodies all over the place. Guts everywhere. Sometimes, there's one, one instance this guy... He decided to kill himself. He threw himself in the tracks. He still lived. The train was on top of him. He was being held together by the wheels. So he was held together. He said, I make a phone call. He called his wife. Listen, you know, I'm, I'm not going to come home. He moved the train. Body went right in half. One thing holding together was the train. Most of the time, I don't play games with you. Most of the time, you're going to stay alive and tell your wife what you did that was stupid. And that's yeah. exactly what he did. I don't think they got the point there. The other get what I I'll tell you again. The dude jumped in the car of the that, train. That really happened. Yeah, the was... train ran over him. The train. So he's like basically like on a track. One half of him is under the train. The other half is outside the train, and it was holding him together. And they moved the train off him or off of him. Off of him, he went in half, and he died. The train was life support, basically. Right. So you can understand. They when the train moved, that was when the most I pulled the plug. Right. So you're going to live until you tell your family what you've done. And that's exactly what happened. So I'll be mindful. King of Terrors. Matthew 13. No, go to um, 1 Kings 22. Go into more detail about that. What verse? 22 verse 1. The book of First Kings, chapter 22 and verse 1. And they continued three years without war between Syria and Israel. And it came to pass in the third year that Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, came down to the king of Israel. The king of Israel at this time was Ahab, the husband of Je Jezebel. Go ahead. And the king of Israel said unto his servants, Know ye that Ramoth and Gilead is ours, and we be still? And take it not out of the hand of the king of Syria. Go ahead. And he said unto Jehoshaphat, 
Will thou go with me to the battle to Ramath Gilead? And Jehoshaphat said to the king of Israel, I am as thou art, my people as thy people, my horses as thy horses. I'll help you. Jehoshaphat was, a, was one of them Israelite prop kings that was very kind. He said, I'll help you, king of Ahab. Ahab was a devil. He was evil as hell. But he said, I'll help you. And my brother, I'll help you. Go ahead. And Jehoshaphat said unto the king of Israel, Inquire, I pray thee, at the word of the Lord today. Then the king of Israel gathered the prophets together, about 400 men. So he gathered 400 men, prophets, to tell him whether or not what they were doing was the right idea to go to war, to go to war for that land, from the Syrians. Go ahead. And said unto them, shall I go against Ramoth Gilead to battle, or shall I forbear? And they said, go up, for the Lord shall deliver it into thine hand of the king. And Jehoshaphat said, is there... Not he a prophet of the Lord besides that we might inquire of him? And the king of Israel said unto Jehoshaphat, There is yet one man, Micaiah, the son of Imlah, by whom we may inquire of the Lord. But I hate him, for he doth not prophesy good concerning me. You know what he said? I hate that dude, man. <laughs> what a prophesy I have that when I don't like that dude. He always saying bad things. Isaiah 30, prophesy smooth things unto us. Micaiah was like, no, I'm not doing that. I'm going to tell you what it is. Go ahead. But I hate him, for he does not prophesy good concerning me, but evil. Go ahead. And Jehoshaphat said, let not the king say so. Don't say that. That's mean. Don't say that about him. Go ahead. Then the, king of, then the king of Israel called an officer and said, hasten hither Micaiah, the son of Imlah. And the king of Israel and Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, sat each on his throne having put on their robes and avoid place in the entrance of the gate of Samaria. And all the prophets pr prophesied before them. Go ahead. And Zedekiah, the son of Kaniah, made him horns of iron, and he said, Thus saith the Lord, With these shalt thou push the Syrians until thou have consumed them. And all the prophets prophesied so, saying, Go up to Ramoth Gilead and prosper, for the Lord shall deliver it into the king's hand. So the 400 men said to him, Go up to Ramoth Gilead and prosper. The Lord's given it into your hands. Go ahead. And the messenger that was gone to call Micaiah spake unto him, saying, Behold now, the words of the prophets declare good unto thee, king with one mouth. So all the 400 prophets declare that the king will be successful in his endeavor to get this land. All 400 of them. Go ahead. Watch this. Let thy word, I pray thee, be like the word of one of so them. So you're going to say the what they say. The pressure's on now. Right. You, you, gonna, you, you by yourself, you better agree with these men. Right, 400 others. <laughs> 400 others. Go ahead. And speak that which is good. You better speak what is good. Go ahead. <laughs> and Micaiah said, as the Lord liveth, <laughs> what the Lord saith unto me, that will I speak. It's better to obey God rather than men. That's what he said. He the exact basically said the hell with all of you. with y'all. <laughs> I'm going to do. I'm gonna say what God says. Not what I feel or what y'all feel, but what God says. Micaiah was bad, man. That dude was fearless. Go they ahead. Imagine they said that, nigga. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's what they said under their breath. And that's under their teeth. <laughs> right. Go ahead. So he came to the king, and the king turned to him, Micaiah, shall we go against Ramoth Gilead to battle, or shall we forbear? Shall we do it, or should we not do it? And he answered him, go and prosper. It's there. Oh, go and prosper. Go ahead. For the Lord shall deliver it into the hand of the king. Go ahead. And the king said unto him, How many times shall I adjure thee that thou tell me nothing <laughs> but that which is true in the name of the Lord? What are you lying for? You know I ain't sure what you want, you really want to say. He, he was being sarcastic. He was saying what he wanted to hear. But that ain't what the Lord said. Go ahead. And he said, I saw all Israel scattered upon the hills <laughs> as sheep that have not a shepherd. I saw all Israel, the, your army, scattered. You wasn't there. Go ahead. Right. And the Lord said, these have no master. Let them return every man to his house in peace. And their master's gone. Their master will be him, the king. Go ahead. And the king of Israel said unto Jehoshaphat, <laughs> did I not tell thee that he would prophesy no good concerning me, but evil? Did I tell you this dude, man? He always bringing some evil about me, man. I'm tired of this dude. He's, I'm tired of him. Go ahead. And he said, hear thou therefore the word of the Lord. I have more to say. There's more. Go I ahead. saw... I saw the Lord sitting on his throne, and all the hosts of heaven standing by him on his right hand and on his left. He's giving a description of the heavens now. He goes, I saw on a vision of the Lord. Angels on the right, that's the good ones. Angels on the left, those are the bad ones. Go ahead. And the Lord said, 
Who shall persuade Ahab? The Lord stood on his throne. He says, which one of y'all are going to persuade Ahab, the king, to go to war? Go ahead. That he may go up and fall at Ramoth Gilead. That he may go up there and die. Because I'm going to kill this dude. But I want a good way to do it. Lord, I'm telling you, man, king of terrors. <laughs> this is bad, man. This is bad. Go this ahead. is some bad stuff. I love reading this. Yep. And one said on this man. One angel said, I have an idea. This, I'll give this idea. Go ahead. And another said on that man. One said, ah, how about that way? You kill him this way. Go ahead. Wait, 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 wait. Yeah. So they offered what they were doing. The Lord said, mm, no. I don't know. That ain't good enough. What, no. what, what do you have? That's what they're doing. He's asking. The council. Got, nah, I don't like yours. What about you? What about, mm, what about you? That's what he's doing. Go ahead. And these are special ones. There's, there's millions of them. But yeah, special ones. Running the right, special ones. Like, which one are you? No, nah, you? Nah, I don't like that. Keep going, keep going. Go ahead. And there came forth a spirit. There came forth a special one. Go ahead. And stood before the Lord and said, I will persuade him. I'll do it. This one's bold. Yeah, I'll persuade you him. You hear the confidence? He said, listen, confidence I, I, I got this. You're going to love this. <laughs> he came before the Lord. He, <laughs> stuck out of the, he stuck out of the line. I'll do it. Go ahead. And the Lord said unto him, wherewith? How? He's, he said, what? He said, with what? Wherewith means with what? Go ahead. And he said, I will go forth and I will be a lying spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. This is a devil. It's an evil one. I will be a lying spirit in them. So all them 400 prophets he had even earlier, guess what happened in them? A lying spirit happened in them. Go ahead. And he said, thou shalt persuade him and prevail also. So, Lord, so not only will you um, persuade him to do it through the prophets, he says, you're going to be successful at it too. Because the Lord will he'll send you to do something that may not work. That lets you know the Lord controls evil and good angels. There's no conspiracy where Lord Satan fell ah, in the ground. Now he poked me with a pitchfork. That ain't that's fairy tales. The Lord said to an evil angel, "You will do what you what I send you to do, and you'll be successful at it. It will be it will be successful." Hey, the Psalm seventy four. Read on. Thou shalt persuade him and prevail also. Go forth and do so. Go forth and do it, and it will be successful. Yeah, Amos 3 and 6. The book of Amos, chapter 3 and verse 6. Shall a trumpet be blown in the city and the people not be afraid? The Most High says, shall a trumpet of war, or the trumpet of destruction, the trumpet of danger be blown in the city and the people not be afraid? If y'all hear a if y'all was to hear a, a certain alarm in here, then y'all know it means get the hell out. Wouldn't everybody get afraid? That's what the Most High is saying. Shall there be an alarm somewhere and the people not be afraid? That's what the trumpet is. Go ahead. Shall there be evil in a city and the Lord have not done it? Shall there be evil in a city and the Lord have not done it? So the Most High is saying that I do. There's another one where the Most High said about that he is the one that do. That's the one I was looking for. That the Lord doeth all these things. That's what I was thinking about. Which one is that one? 45 and 7. That's the, yeah, one. that's the one. That's the one I wanted. Isaiah 45 and 7. Isaiah 45 and verse 7. I form the light. I form the light. And create darkness. <laughs> and I create darkness. Go ahead. I make peace. I make peace. And create evil. I create evil. So the Satan, the, the 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 demons that came up to speak to the Most High the, for for uh, King Ahab the fall of Ramoth Gilead, the Most High created that demon to, to come and do that. Read that again. I make peace and create evil. I, the Lord, do all these things. I, the Lord, do all these things. So that's going to perfectly with what we just read earlier. Mm -hmm. Go back to that. You got it, D. Go back to um, First Kings again, 22. First Kings 22 and 23. Now, therefore, behold, the Lord had put a lying spirit in the mouth of all these prophets. You imagine this one man is saying to all 400 prophets, you're liars? He said, the Lord put a lying spirit in all 400 of these men over here. They're all lying to you. Go ahead. And the Lord has spoken evil concerning thee. And the Lord, 
And the Lord has spoken evil through me concerning you once again, Ahab. So you know what? I ain't going to read the rest. Just, uh, uh, take up the whole class. You read it on your own. The guy <laughs> smacked him in the face. Makai got disrespected, man. But in the end, he gets his, the most side looks out for him. Go to um, Matthew um, 13. That, that class is, that's some class. Yeah, I know. Yourself. Can I say something? Why you, yeah. you going to? So, listen. This, like the scripture says, the deceived and the deceiver right. are his. Yeah. When you see somebody that, I'll give you an example. Brothers have come through this truth. And been in this truth for a while, and then they fall out and sit with the devil. You understand? And when they have been went through this, dropped it, and gone, been completely seduced and done. That's where the Most High has the deceiver sitting there and the deceived sitting there, and they both think that they all right. Yep. That's what you call a, some power. This like what you just got to reading. Just thinking about how the Most High could just. When he gets angry with, because of your wickedness, of what, whatever reason he do it for, to turn your brain upside down, you just just stone cold lost your mind, and you sitting up there thinking you you got plenty of sense. Yep. I'm still in the truth. I'm still in the truth. You gone. You gone. You done. Fried. Burn up. You done. Go ahead. Yeah, we've heard atheists leave out of here saying I'm still in the truth, and they're atheists. Right. That's a lying spirit right there. I don't believe in God, but I'm still in the truth. Whose truth are you talking about? That's insane. Another topic. Matthew 13, verse 52. Matthew 13, 52. Matthew 13 and 52. Then said he unto them, Therefore every scribe which is instructed unto the kingdom of heaven is like unto a man that is an householder, which bringeth forth out of his treasures things, New and old. Which brings forth out of his treasure. Out of his, just note that part. Out of his treasure. What is his treasure? Get Matthew 12 and 35. The precept of treasure. Out of his treasure. What is that? He's speaking, he's speaking a parable, but he explains earlier on what the treasure was. 12.35. Matthew 12.35. A good man out of the good treasure of the heart. See that? Out of the good treasure of the heart, meaning of the mind. The good treasure, not the bad, the good treasure of the heart, of the mind. Go ahead. Bring it forth good things. Brings forth good things, which is what? The commandments. Teaching them and applying them. Go ahead. And an evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart. Go ahead. Bringeth forth evil things. Evil things. So go back to Matthew again. So now we know what the, the treasure is. 1352 again. Then said he unto them, therefore every scribe which is instructed unto the kingdom of heaven. Meaning every righteous scribe or prophet, go ahead, is like unto a man that is an householder, go ahead. which bringeth forth out of his treasure, out of his heart, out of his mind, things new and old. What are the things new and old? The new, new and old testament, the entire Bible is what he's saying. That's what he's saying. The good, a good scribe will bring forth out of things new and old. Because the new covenant is simply a confirmation of the old. That's all it is. And more magnified. That's all it is. You understand? Because the old covenant speaks about what? The new covenant. When you read Jeremiah 30. Let's get that real quick. Just to prove it. Let me not sound confused. Jeremiah 31. And verse. You know what I want. 31. 31, 31. The book of Jeremiah 31, verse 31. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. See, that's what the old covenant confirms the new one. That's the law and the prophets. For those who denounce the new covenant, it's simple as hell. Because the old covenant is mentioning the new covenant. So a good householder or a righteous scribe will bring forth out of his treasure of his mind both things new and old. Precept upon precept, line upon line, here a little, there a little. Out of the old and the new. Because they all work together as one. All right? So now, let's get Luke 8.15. You hear him say, oh, let me hear what comes out of your heart. Your mind. That's what you hear him say. Don't use the Bible. Let me hear what you feel, what you think out of your heart, your mind. Watch this. The book of Luke, chapter 8, verse 15. But that on the good ground are they which in an honest and good heart. Which in an honest and good heart. So people say, I have a good heart. Let's see what gives you a good heart. Read it from the top again. 
but that on the good ground are they which in an honest and good heart, having heard the word, they heard the word, keep it, they apply it, go ahead, and bring forth fruit with patience. That's how you have an honest and good heart. When you hear the word and you keep it. So if you ain't keeping the word of God, you ain't got no good heart. You have an evil heart or an evil treasure. You understand? All right. Go to Jeremiah 17 verse 9. You always people say, oh, well, God knows my heart. Yes, he does. He sure does know. Let's read about it. Jeremiah 17 verse 9. Without the laws of God, let's see what the mind is. Jeremiah 17 and verse 9. The heart is deceitful above all things. No, they said above all things. So of all deceitful things you can think of, the mind is the worst. The mind by itself is the worst thing ever. Because it's influenced by everything around it. Or you see or hear, it's in there. So consciously or, or subconsciously or subliminally, it's there. The only way to fight it off is by applying God's laws. But if you don't, you're going to act on what? Act on impulse. Act on influence. That's how you see people walking around, men walking around with their pants all tight, wrapping under their behind, that's their mind. Women walking around half naked, that's from following their mind, following their heart. Men walking around sleeping around, going to the clubs, getting drunk and high. Women, likewise, that goes back to them following their heart, which is deceitful above everything else. Go ahead. The heart is deceitful above all things. Go ahead. And desperately wicked. You know why it says desperately wicked? Because the heart makes excuses for what it does. I'm not following man. I'm doing it because I want to. Mm -hmm. I'm not just like a whore because I'm a hoe. I'm just because I feel comfortable like this. This is the fashion. No, that's your mind. That's your mind. That's the deceitful mind. It makes excuses. It finds ways to escape instruction. Find ways to escape discipline. Which goes back to what Deacon Yassop was saying earlier. My brother's leaving out of here and their mind is destroyed. Or corrupted in some way or another. Because their heart has deceived them. Go ahead. Read it from the top again. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? No one. The Lord knows it better than anybody else. The Lord knows the mind more than anybody else. All right? So now, get Proverbs 28 and 26. This is why you cannot trust your mind at all. Unless God's laws are in it. 28 and 26. Proverbs 28 verse 26. He that trusteth in his own heart is a fool. Hear that? So when you trust in your own heart, the Bible says you are a fool. Go ahead. But whoso walketh wisely. Whoso applying the commandments. Go ahead. He shall be delivered. That guy gets the kingdom. He gets saved. But you trust in your own heart, you're doomed. Fools men get in the kingdom. Fools don't rule kingdoms. They get death. They're made examples of. So you cannot trust in your own heart and do what you want to do or speak how you feel. The words must always come out of the Bible. Shalom, this is, I'm Elder Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. YouTube likes to shut our channels down, as some of you have noticed, <laughs> ever so often. Subscribing to join IUIC will assure you will always stay connected to our YouTube accounts. We want to do our best to make sure this truth gets up. Please click and join our subscriber YouTube channel called Join IUIC to stay linked to all of our videos. So again, please make sure you subscribe to this Join IUIC channel to get your latest updates on all our YouTube channels. Shalom.